Welcome, how's it going? Testing out the YouTube version of the mobile app. We'll see how it goes uh, and the response from it. Uh, this is just to get a sense as to which is still the best program or platform for me to use. Uh, it's somewhat comfortable. Uh, I have the uh, camera or the phone pretty much right in front of my face. So this shadow right here is from my phone. Uh, so it's connected to an arm, bendable arm, that's projecting down to the paper. And so um, it's kind of right in front of me. So I had to do that to be able to see uh, what people are typing and such. So I had to look back on the screen as to what's going on. Chosen the angle of view so I can kind of see it from the left hand side so I can see what you're drawing. Most people tend to kind of put the camera on the wrong end where they kind of cover their uh, use their hand to cover up the drawing so they can't really see what's going on. So, again, just to um, further test out what the best options are. But fairly comfortable. I've done this several times uh, using the Facebook app, using the uh, you, uh, I'm sorry, Instagram version of it, and I'm still trying to look for the best option for continually doing uh, live feeds. So it's nice because the YouTube version here, this is the first time I've used this, um, they only just released it maybe a couple months ago for the uh, YouTube Live on mobile app. And um, I've been looking for them to be able to do this for a long time. They always had a third party for you to have access to this. Uh, but this, oops, sorry, there's a cable right here connected to it too. So this is the first time I'm actually using it for this version, which is pretty cool. And if anybody has any questions, particular questions, uh, please ask anyone, anytime. Um, in terms of knowing what I'm going to be drawing, I have a general theme or genre in mind. So the genre I'm going to be going for or theme is the idea of a mechanical uh, mech kind of suit with a guy inside of it. I just wanted the back shot. That's pretty much all I got going. Um, how's it going, Samuel? I don't have any reference that I'm using. Uh, I thought about a little bit of an image in my head, but that's about it. So I'm trying to like problem solve and figure it out as I go, as I'm drawing it. I don't recommend this for, for a lot of people that haven't experienced enough in terms of drawing. I want you, you should continually to research as much as possible before uh, venturing into trying to problem solve on the moment on the page because that ends up creating a lot of mess ups and frustrations for people. Uh, not to say that you can't get there, uh, but it does take time to be able to build up that level of understanding of what kind of decision making you need to have. Uh, so it's a lot of decision making. How's it going, Antonio? Tony, how's it going? So currently right now I'm just having a, a mech type of theme and that's about it. And let me know if the picture is clear. I, I'd like to have a little bit of feedback as well from you guys uh, how this is looking in terms of the picture. Uh, also 
if in terms of like audio, if you guys can hear me okay, if there's a lot of noise, if there's whatever the case is. So um, please let me know how the experience is for you guys as well. How's it going, Jacob? Nice to see you on here. So there's gonna be like a guy sitting inside this mech suit that's kind of opened up in the back. That's good to hear. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, I'm sure also due to inter internet connection on people's ends, it will probably uh, differ from person to person. I'm not sure how well YouTube will maintain its stream level for me. Uh, so for Facebook, I've always had things like breakage or pixelization, uh, things like that that would happen where it was kind of annoying. Uh, and the video quality that it would save into the Facebook was just never a very good quality either. That was really my only option because it saved the video. Um, Instagram also saves the videos too now. However, their version also is a very low quality, uh, which I uploaded and it can't record horizontally like this. It only, only does uh, vertically. So it really wasn't the best in terms of live feeds as well for me too. So I'm hoping this right now will be the set version where the YouTube straight, just straight going into it would be my best option. That's good to hear. Excellent, thank you. I'm gonna try pushing a perspective shot on this guy over here. I'm gonna push his legs downward. A lot of times when I do mechanical uh, shots like this, I'll tend to actually create a silhouette. Uh, not even thinking about mechanics, not really thinking about the engineering aspect of things, how it could read, uh, but more just creating an interesting silhouette form. And then I actually try to problem solve it on the interior afterwards, which is a very different way of working than I'm sure many of you guys seen from other people, where they try to figure out all the individual parts and pieces as they build it. Uh, but I actually just create a, a shape form like this. And then I'll just start implanting parts and pieces, uh, even adding more to it too as I go. Guidelines I think are very important, especially when you are starting out uh, to make sure everything is in place in the proper area and so that you don't end up um, wasting materials or even getting you know, the kinds of frustrations that can build up uh, producing this kind of uh, work. So in the beginning, I think it's highly important you do so. I still you know, try to do as much as I can. The pen is a Pilot, yes it is. Uh, this is the Pilot Fremo and um, it's a great pen so far. The pen is quite uh, expensive. But this is a twist version of it, so it's got a little spring inside of it, so you can twist it and the nib comes out. So it's spring-loaded, so it hides it, and it's got a little trap door at the end of this. And so this is a fountain pen, it's about an extra, f no, this is a fine tip. And so the actual converter is on the inside of this, so it's a capless pen, essentially, is what it is. It's a very, very nice one. It is extremely nice. <laughs> and twist it, and the nib comes out. Uh, again, going back to your question about guidelines, um, well, I think every artist, no matter who they are, uh, had to do some sort of study to understand what they are drawing, and then they build the huge visual vocabulary understanding of what they've drawn before um, through memorizing, through practice, through mileage, and then from that, they can draw the things that they want to in any angle, perspective they want uh, based on the fact that they've studied it before. 
So there is a difference to me in terms of drawing and studying. Uh, you can copy something, but sometimes through copying it, you're not necessarily memorizing what's going on. Uh, but through studying, understanding what's going on, you, just, you draw from multiple different angles. You repeat the drawing several times over again. Uh, you, you know, even if you don't understand it, you would draw it again over and over again. So that helps build a massive amount of, of mileage and memory. Uh, essentially, the fact is that mileage is your guideline, yeah. So the more you draw something, the more familiar you become with things, and that's the way I explain it uh, in terms of things like speed, in terms of things like memory, uh, repetition, and being familiar with what you are drawing is the only real key to things because without any kind of uh, history of information, you know, based on what you've seen or studied from, there's no way for you to pull from that, uh, and especially if you haven't studied it enough. trying to frame this properly because this is a horizontal shot I'm drawing it vertically so I'll have to remember to watch out for that next time illustrations appealing well it first has to appeal to you you know do you enjoy creating it do you enjoy uh, telling those stories um, you are going to be obviously your hardest harshest critic and you may not end up being satisfied with a lot of your pieces but I think a lot of it comes through feedback also from other people um, whatever level of finish you have from your work it's not going to be an overnight success and so anything I've developed over time has been one of those things where at first I'm really quite sure if it's good and some people might say oh it's okay it's cool or this and that uh, but I take the feedback I take the critiques and I try to adjust the pieces of art or stories or projections um, and, and try to then alter it and so that the next time I bring it back uh, there's a better version of stuff so I think that's really what I use uh, things like expos and conventions for is I go there to show new work regardless of how, how I feel whether it's the best version or not uh, if I've completed something to the best of my ability I'm gonna get a response back and based on that response I can then judge what I need to do to move forward or even drop it completely because the response is poor uh, again we are creating products to sell as a, as a marketable piece so as a brand identity as to what we are creating uh, we need to get a sense as to what to move forward on. And the only way to do so is to share it, is to get a sense as to what people want and not want. I know that's scary for some people because they don't want to expose themselves and they feel like they have to show the best work they can. But I think it's more important for you to learn from mistakes and put yourself out there. So I very much treat Comic-Con and different expos, CTN, WonderCon, or any show that I've been to before, uh, a very much an um, area of experimentation. In a way it is, and it's not to say that you're not dedicating yourself or putting an investment of time or effort into the uh, project, uh, but again, like I said, there are people out there that have worked on their own projects for years upon years upon years, and they become so afraid to share things because they're so unsure or insecure about their work, uh, they never get a sense as to what actually is going on because it's tunnel vision. After a while, only you seeing it, uh, you're only going to see the problems. Uh, so you're never going to see it as, as a positive thing anymore. And uh, there are many people that actually treat theirs like babies as well, too. And they don't want to expose it because they're afraid of people stealing it. Um, but the thing is, once you even produce it and you make something out of it, it can still be stolen. So there's really no point of, you know, trying to mask or hide things or process or uh, refrain from sharing things. I think it's a very important thing to really share what you're doing. It actually makes people more involved and, and more interested in just you as a designer and artist. And I think that also attributes to your... Uh, representation as your brand. So if you ever get a chance and opportunity to do shows, I would say I would highly recommend doing it. And even if you're like, oh, I'm not good enough, or I don't have enough things to do or, or sell, do it. I appreciate that, Chris. Stuff outside the classroom. Um, you got to obviously keep drawing, but the thing is, you know, it's really hard to do it by yourself. So I think building connections and friendships that you've had from schools and maintaining those and meeting up with people to doing so is really important. Uh, you got to go back and redo the entire process of the classes in actuality. So, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, you can get, you say, oh, I'm on break now for summer and 
two weeks will go by, you're like, oh, you're pushing really hard, but you kind of lose steam. And things like that happen all the time for people. Uh, but that's where you have to be very, very careful. So um, it's easy to stay, but hard to stay on top of the, the wagon. And so I think being and doing things with people is really more important. So stay in connections with people. You can, you know, plan a schedule and all that kind of stuff. But like I said, life happens, you know. I think it's also important for you to take a moment to actually do a break, you know, take a week off, uh, do whatever you want, get, get a time to step away, but use that time not to not think about it. It's actually a time for you to absorb. Uh, the more you absorb, because the thing is when you're in the process of learning, you're cramming so much information in your head, uh, sometimes a lot of things kind of slip out. You forget some things, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't really quite understand what you were doing at first. Uh, but through a period of break, actually there can be a, a moment of absorption. Much like an exercise, you need breaks and rest for your muscles to rebuild in a similar way. Sorry, I missed that statement or question. Sometimes when I look up, I see questions and such, and it's in a white block, but then it fades really fast. So I'm gonna have to see if I can change that setting, if the chat can stay up permanently or something like that. I'm not really quite sure the settings right now. I'm not gonna do it just yet, but I'll take a look at that later on. So if you guys are asking questions and I miss it, I apologize. Just retype it. I'm not sure what's gonna happen at the end of this recording. I don't know if it'll save it properly. Uh, I hope it saves it at HD. Um, I don't know what the quality is gonna be like, so that's what I'm very curious about right now. So we have a guy right here getting inside of a mech. He's holding onto this handle. Back portion right here has been opened up. Uh, these are kind of like the, almost like a carapace of an insect form where they're just kind of envelop and close over. Uh, these are like the long, he kind of puts his legs inside that portion. So it's an exo suit, essentially what it is. And really, I just had a thought as to what type of genre I wanted to draw, which was just a mech series. Uh, I wanted the guy going inside the suit. I know I wanted to have a back shot, which I've never really done a back shot like this before, so I'm trying to figure it out as I go, honestly. Ah, you know, kids, they can be quite mean. Uh, yeah, I think that's great. You know, I think a lot of my friends used to do that as well. For me, I don't really listen to music. I actually put movies in the background. So I actually have a movie in the background right now. It's uh, the new Jurassic Park that came out, which, you know, whatever. But it's something in the background as noise. So we're going to go about 30 minutes on this piece. I've got most of the information to lay out down. I'm going to start to detail it a bit more as I go. I'm going to finish out this leg section right here too. Start to break up the panels on this one. So here's the perspective of the box plane on the ground that now I'm taking those big chunks of shapes of the legs the silhouettes and I'm trying to make sense of them uh, putting in panel lines um, shape language that gives the indication of mechanical movement pistons and joints. Uh, I like to use a lot of actual human anatomy to do the panel breaking. Uh, for instance, like the muscle groupings of biceps and triceps or in the legs and the calves. I kind of look at the muscle forms and human shapes and use the natural lines that are there uh, to actually cut them up on the mechanical form. So when I do things like uh, animal forms and I change them into machines or robots, I do a similar fashion where I look at their actual anatomy and then um, use their lines as inspiration to cut up that form. If this works out well, I'm probably gonna try to do these once a week. 
How about ways to engage people at a convention? Is staying busy drawing at a convention a good way also to do? Uh, sorry, that last question I just missed. Uh, the first question about the conventions and how to engage people. Uh, first and foremost, don't be on your phone, okay? Uh, I've been to like the Anime Expo here in LA and it's probably one of the worst shows I've been to. Um, for one, the actual space and how the convention treats their artists is terrible. They kind of corral them into a space and it's almost like a cattle pad or uh, it's, it's horrible uh and the way they set up their tables at anime expos like this is that all the artists and i know they're young they expose all their artwork and they put up a giant wall and they literally have a small little hole almost like a takeout you know kind of express line and they kind of stick their head out if they want to talk and so you can't really see the artist until you get right in front of the table and usually when you walk by their tables they're just on their phone man they're just kind of like doing their thing uh and, and until you actually get their attention they don't look up which is, I think, terrible. It leaves a really bad impression. Uh, it's very unprofessional. And if you're using that time to be there to, to promote your artwork and brand, that doesn't leave a good message in my opinion. So uh, I've seen many, many artists do that. So I guess the say is uh, be attentive, you know. Um, if somebody walks by, sees, sees your work, you can just say hi. You don't have to like, cry, like try to gather them like a car salesman. That's also really bad too, like being really obnoxious and loud. Uh, but the idea is when somebody approaches and, and wants to engage, you're ready to actually talk to them instead of having them approach you uh, that you are you know, ready to talk, essentially answering any questions. It's a lot of energy you know, doing those kinds of shows. Uh, but I think that's why when I go to places like the Anime Expo or different shows that are more focused to uh, the fan art kind of stuff, um, it's very kind of common these days where younger kids are trying to do these shows, but they're also very anxious. They don't want to approach and talk to people. And so they use their artwork almost like a wall <laughs> to separate themselves from everyone else, which, you know, again, I understand things like that are nerve wracking and very, very um, anxiety building so you got to find a way to get yourself out there to expose yourself but at the same time feel comfortable enough to talk uh, to people and be in an area to talk but um again there's especially if you are going to continue to push that direction you got to be very very aware of it I think becoming a f really familiar with your work uh, being able to do the elevator pitch you know telling stories really fast uh, under, you know, making people understand what you're about and what you're trying to sell uh, so you're not wasting time that's a lot of practice also uh, but something that I think most people need to be doing How often do I go live? It's kind of sporadic. It's just kind of whenever I feel at the moment. Uh, if this version of it, especially with the YouTube version of the app goes well and it records nicely, it saves well. Um, it, so far the engagement of chatting with people seems to be good. Uh, I'll probably try to do this once a week and usually once at the end of the week. Question, how do you approach studying mechs? Uh, study the real thing, real mechanics. Look at robots that exist. Things like spot welders, uh, things that are for, um, you know, medical machines, medical robots, things that exist right now. Look at the way they work. Type up things like, you know, f uh, things like articulation of machines. Uh, how, do, how do hydraulics and pressurized, you know, kind of piping work? Um, you know, it's just the basics on some of the kind of engineering behind some robot designs. Uh, and use that information visually to input it into your shapes, essentially. And once you intermix organics, where you understand how muscles work, we can understand that muscles of like a, a tricep is a push and pull, or I'm sorry, a push and a bicep is a pull, then these mechanical parts kind of signify that. Uh, where this one machine part pretty much does that, it's a push and pull effect. Uh, this is a joint that shows that it's a hinge joint, so it rotates in one direction, or moves in one direction. So I find that to be the best place to start is to look at the real thing. Be inspired by it, you can pull from it directly, because again, it's real stuff. So it's not like you're making it up. But at the same time is that you don't have to be this crazy engineer person to fully understand it. The idea is about taping shape information that is recognizable to you as functional parts and use them. No, Gundams are an excellent place. Um, building Gundams for me actually changed a lot in how I approach mech designs because I can see the way they engineer the uh, mechanical movements of joints and such, where they place their pistons, where they place you know, the um, architectural forms of the... the the structure. Uh, it really helps a lot actually. So building model kits really changed it.
All you need is, you know, save a little bit and buy one just to build it. <clears throat> On the flip side of the con question, what's a good way for students or attendees to break the ice for professionals uh, looking at portfolios? Um, I think with something like that is you don't have to be so concerned about talking to people and professionals that are there because they're they are there to talk you know so don't feel like you're wasting their time or kind of impeding on them because they're already putting themselves out there <laughs> so i don't say i don't think you have to feel bad about asking them questions or asking them to see your work and they'll mostly tell you if they can't you know because time wise or schedule wise or because they are legally bound not to for instance disney artists are not allowed to look at portfolios because Disney in contract this, uh, doesn't allow them to. They have their own portfolio um, actual times for people to go in and do that thing. So artists that show at like conventions and such are, are most times not obliged to do so. So a lot of it comes down to your end. It's feeling okay to talk to people. Does having multiple styles on a portfolio hurt? Not necessarily multiple genres, just illustration styles. Uh, it, it can. It brings a lot of unfocus into it. So I think in a portfolio, it's better to have a priority or a primary focus to it. So for instance, if you want to be a uh, concept artist or visual development artist, I think it's good to stick with one style with a slight variety of things, but at the same time having a primary focus. So your book can contain multiple different things, but your primary focus might be character or it might be environment or it might be product or prop design. But again, you can include other things after that. But I think as a student, when you begin, it's important for you to have a very clear message. You might have to re Sorry, I missed that question again too. What are some common mistakes you make when making a piece like this? Uh, symmetry can go off. Things like proportion can come off very wrong too. Perspective can come off wrong. These are typical things that can happen in anything in drawing or design. Uh, so those are just very common things that can happen all the time. So through practice, obviously becoming more familiar, uh, you can kind of preemptively, you know, avoid those mistakes. What kind of degree do you recommend for concept design or a degree do you have? I have a degree in a uh, Bachelor of Science in Illustration from Art Center, but a degree doesn't matter. It's the degree is a piece of paper that just tells you you finished school. And it has no uh, say in terms of whether you get a job or not. So I know parents and stuff like that will be like, oh, you need a degree and whatnot to uh, work in the field. Uh, if you want a degree to teach, it's important to have it. But if you want to work in the industry, a degree doesn't mean anything. How many babies I could take on? Uh, I guess it's a question that I could potentially answer at a convention, and you could ask that. But I have no idea. I guess it depends if the babies are mobile or not. If they can crawl, then maybe. But if they're, I don't know, less than a year, they're probably just going to sit there, so they probably can't do much. Yes, absolutely. Portfolio is everything. If your work doesn't compete, a piece of paper is not going to save you, saying that I have a degree in this. The reason why you go to school for, for um, art and whatnot is not for the degree, but it's for the experience and the social networking that you'll get by being at that school. I see what time it is right now. 10.09. Okay, I'm going to go for about another 20 minutes or so. I wish it showed me how... Oh, it's already been almost 30 minutes. So, Do you have a favorite artist uh, whose botanical drawing you revere besides Da Vinci? Mm, botanical drawings of plants and landscapes. Uh, in terms of modern day, um, let me think. It's a good question. I really like a lot of those classical science books uh, that were like based on animals and you know sea life or insects, and they're very kind of 
illustrative, they're a lot all painted, and they're very kind of standard shots, like side shots or front shots. And it's more of like a, a science journal in a lot of ways. Um, I'll get to your question, Tony, how much planning was put into this piece before starting. But for me, currently, there's, you know, one of my instructors back in the day from Art Center, his name is Mike Hernandez. Uh, I love the way he draws. You know, he, he does a lot of Sharpie drawings. He's known for his plein air gouache painting, but uh, the guy can draw really well, too. I'll get to your question next, Gabriel, about how much time to spend drawing. Uh, but the previous question, um, I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, how much planning was thought of before getting into this shot? Just ideas, just thinking about what the genre is. I wanted to do a mech and a back shot. That was about it. Using no reference, just kind of making it up as I go. Going to your question, Tony, about how much time you should spend to draw. Uh, any amount of time, as long as you're drawing every day. I don't care if it's, you know, five hours or ten minutes a day. Do I get to work at home? Essentially, uh, a lot of my... Pretty much my products or projects that I work on are for myself or for clients and I do it from home. There are some projects I'll go in-house to a studio if I need to. Very instinctive. Uh, I think it's a lot of it is experience. Instinctive is a part of the game, but I think that's always going to be there from your training. But a lot of it is just from the massive amount of mileage, time put into it. Time is everything. That's where people are going to run into a lot of problems because you're, you're not patient enough to invest that time where everyone ahead of you has already done that. So for a lot of kids right now in school, in art center and whatnot, uh, you're wanting things much quicker and it's not going to come that, come that quick because this is a skill-based uh, thing and it's not a very easy thing to pick up. So hopefully to answer your question, Tony, the idea is that you draw every day. Uh, your mind's on it every day. But it's not about drawing 10 hours every single day because that will destroy it for you. So the idea that you are inquisitive, curious, constantly drawing things from your observations, things that you see, you know, collecting things, whatever the case is. You're a professor. When do you normally teach? And do you teach an intro class, whatnot, uh, basics, knowledge, and sketching? I teach at the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. I teach at the Concept Design Academy in Pasadena. That's also an open school. CGMA is an online school that I teach at as well. And the sketching classes that I teach are fundamental drawing classes, but having some base knowledge does help, especially in terms of things like perspective and whatnot. Um, but the classes that are open to the publics would be the Concept Design Academy School or the CGMA uh, School, CG Academy. So those are the ones you want to look at. Art Center is a full-time college and university, so a lot of my students are either entertainment or product design students. But if you are just starting out, I think those kinds of workshop or skill-based schools are uh, a good way to go. And there are many of them out there right now. Uh, you know, Nomen, I think, has some DVDs online as resources. There's Schoolism. There's SVS Learn. Um, you know, whatnot. Art Center, well, uh, you just apply. Uh, if you feel like you're ready to invest your life fully into what you want to do, uh, that's what you'd want to get into. Art Center is just one of many schools. And I'm not going to say Art Center is the best school either. Even though I'm from there and I teach there, I'm not going to say that that's the only best place to go to. Any school you go to and what you invest into is what you'll get out of it. So Art Center doesn't necessarily mean you go there and you're going to get a degree and all of a sudden you get a job. There's no guarantee of anything. So the idea is anywhere you go, whatever the place is, you invest fully into it. You make a choice that what you are going to do for the next four or five years of your life in school is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. SVA in New York, I do not. Uh, there was a school in Savannah, uh, Georgia that I know of. I hear it's quite good, SCAD. That's more based on animation. Uh, there's also RISD up in you know the East Coast, which is more for industrial. I think they have an illustration program. I'm going to push a little bit of details now on darks on some of these parts. I'm not going to go too overboard. We've got about 34 minutes. I'm probably going to go additional 10, and I'll stop and cut this off. I like to take this as far as I can. I like to at least finish a piece while we're here doing this. A piece like this would normally take... A little bit more than half an hour. Uh, for me, because I'm talking, it actually you know, drags my time just a little bit because I'm constantly looking up at the screen. So I probably would have gotten a lot, I would have gotten here a lot faster.
Is there any way we can send in our work for you to critique? Unfortunately, at this moment, the only thing you can do is either email me, but uh, my time crunch is kind of insane right now. What you'd want to do is find me live. So if you're able to go to like a show or convention and bring and prepare your work, find me at those locations and I would be more than happy to give you information or f uh, feedback based on it. Uh, the next show I'll be doing is in San Diego Comic Con. One after that will be in CTN in Burbank, California. I will be traveling this uh, summer around the world. So I will be in Australia in June and then I'll be in Poland in September doing workshops. So if you can find me live at any moment or in person, that is the best time to do it. Uh, when it comes to like emails and such like that, I will reply to some, but I get kind of uh, inundated with a lot of emails. So I miss either some of them or they just go into my spam. I don't see it. I'm gonna push the guy. The mechanical form, I'm gonna keep it a little bit lighter. So he will pop out. This Pilot Fermo pen is definitely one of my favorite pens to use these days. I invested a lot of money into it. It was quite expensive. Uh, maybe that's why I'm trying to use it more and more to, so that it's a valid purchase. But still, it is actually a very nice pen. Is it okay to combine finger motion with shoulder movement when drawing? Absolutely. Uh, I'll get to your question next, Andrew, illustration at Art Center. Uh, in terms of drawing, uh, depending on the scale and the size, for me, I do a lot of finger motion and movement. And the thing about drawing is that there's this one motion that changes everything. It's this, back and forth, back and forth. There's rotation, circular. There's obviously hand movement from the shoulder and elbow, and then there's finger movements. But this right here, I think is what changes a lot uh, in terms of drawing approach. Because I've done a lot of left-hand drawing and I'm not a left-hand person, and I have a terrible time drawing left-handed. And I can get my circular motions and whatnot, but the back and forth, I don't have the pressure sensitivity. So that's where I don't get the delicacy in line. With my right hand, I have that sensitive in terms of like the motion of it. So I find this motion to be crucial in terms of drawing. Uh, Illustration Art Center, I think it's a great program. Uh, it's one of the programs that gives you the opportunity to explore a lot of things, so that's why I enjoy it. I would love to come, come to Brazil or any of the uh, Northern European countries. A lot of it is just making sure I can find the right platform, uh, whether it's a workshop or a school or an event that will invite me to it, essentially. So if you, guys, if you guys know of any shows coming up and if you uh, are connected with them or if you can uh, send me information, you know, based on that, just, you know, write it as a comment, I will definitely look into it. For me, my plan for this year was to travel and to uh, teach workshops around the world. Pushing a little bit more detail onto his jumpsuit, just cross hatching now. What is something that amazes you as being an instructor? Uh, for me, it's the light bulb that goes off, you know, because anybody who comes into a class for the first time might have an impression of the topic of the class or an idea as to what it covers, but until they actually try, they, they start to see the difficulties behind it. But through that difficulty, if they're able to stick with it, they, they start to see the application, but they also start to see the growth happening within them in a very short amount of time. Uh, so I find that to be great, you know, the adaptation skills that most young people can have, uh, which is necessary you know, to be able to work in the industry. The adaptation uh, is highly crucial. You potentially can, but it's not easy. It, there's a lot of red tape. Uh, it requires you to be very, very stubborn, <laughs> and it requires you to go through a lot of red tape, and your skill sets have to be strong. You gotta prove the case that you actually can and should take classes from those other departments. Um, but the illustration department, I feel, does give you a little bit more uh, ways to explore in that sense, where the other departments tend to be a little bit more closed off. 
Let's push his line thickness around his shape. Hopefully this will save properly. So for those of you that missed the beginning, if you want to watch how it started, uh, what line I started with, where I began the drawing, what shapes I began with, you are welcome to go check it out. We're going to go for about this is our last five minutes. So this is about a 45 minute sketch. What practice would you say helps the most in terms of drawing from your imagination? Um, second question from Samuel is how large of a school is Art Center? First question in terms of practices from imagination is draw from actual observation, real things. To push your imagination, it requires you to have seen something because a lot of our stuff from our imagination is based off of our experiences. Uh, things we've seen, things we've experienced, smells, sights, touches, and it helps build our visual language. So if you haven't seen anything, and if, let's say as an example, I said, I want you to design me a creature, but I want you to uh, be inspired or use information from an elephant. And if you've never seen an elephant before, if you've never drawn an elephant, how would you know what it is? It's kind of the same idea back in the day when people were traveling on the world back in like the, you know, the early you know, periods of the time when people were you know, on ships and stuff still. You know, rich royalty would send out their uh, voyagers out there and find out new world and such and people would see crazy animals and they bring back drawings of these animals or just descriptions, written words and say, okay, this is what this thing looked like and people would try to draw it but it looks completely different from what the actual animal was, right? Um, but that's the thing, it's like unless you have actually seen something it's really hard to push your imagination or to alter it to become something fresh or new. <clears throat> there was a second question. Um, how large is Art Center? It's pretty decent size, about 2,000 people or so. If a university invited you to workshop, is it possible to, uh, you came to, yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, if whatever country you are from, if you have a school or university or event out there, uh, all you have to do is contact the school or the administrations out there, give them my information, uh, connect them to my Instagram, and let them know I'm looking. Do you know of any good Southern California art galleries that are worthwhile exhibits? Uh, Nucleus, I think, is a good one. That kind of shows a lot of the entertainment stuff. Nucleus Gallery is out in Alhambra, California. Uh, there's one I go to all the time myself, which is the Center Stage Gallery. Center Stage Gallery is connected to CTN. Appreciate it. Thank you, Samuel. This guy's almost there. And once I finish him up, I'm going to shut down. Seems to have gone smoothly. There were a couple moments here and there where the connection dropped just slightly, uh, and there was a bit of a poor connection. So hopefully it didn't really affect it too much. I'm going to go back and kind of review this as I finish up. I will always post on my Instagram as to when I will do my next live feed. So do always have a look out on the story section. What percentage of your workflow is digital as opposed to tr traditional when working for a client? When it's coming to a client, unless they ask for traditional, 100% digital. So if I'm working for a client in uh, games or whatever the case is or design, it's always going to be digital. So unless the person or a client asks for traditional, I won't. And this is due to the fact that they require changes or whatnot. Changes are easier to make on a digital file. All right, this guy's coming to a close. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for joining in. This is my first YouTube live feed. Um, for digital stuff, I use a Cintiq. In my old Cintiq, the 22 inch, the square one, that's what I use. Um, I don't have the new stuff right now. <laughs> Jacob, yeah. Um, if I don't, if I don't, if you can't reach me from that directly, again, try using multiple ways of contacting me through Facebook, email, whatever the case is. So send what you can. But that's the thing. It's like sometimes messages get thrown in different areas, and I don't check where they are. So.
Well, learn to draw traditionally first. I think that really builds a lot of confidence. Um, I know learning a tablet can be quite difficult to do. So Scott, I mean, the only thing you can really do is to invest the time. So uh, the digital is, is something that's going to, you know, obviously be important for you professionally. But I think the confidence in drawing really comes from the analog side too. Uh, so stick with what you are familiar with or comfortable with at the moment and transition when you are ready. Slow and steady is fine, but you got to be aware. Be aware. All right, cool. Thank you for joining you guys. I'm going to leave it this one right here for this one to finish live feed. Uh, session number one. Uh, hopefully, I'll come back next week and we'll do it again. Uh, based on this, I might even try it sooner. So hopefully, I'll see you all again some other time and come back to the next one. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.